Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of K at MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today I want to show you a few different configurations for the Wolf River Coils Take It Along 1000 and Silver Bullet Mini. Stay tuned. So I get a lot of questions about the Wolf River coils. Uh, a lot of guys that are starting out for the first time, much like myself, uh, this was the first antenna that I bought. A lot of people ask, you know, is it a good antenna? Before we get into any of this, it's a fantastic antenna. All of these configurations work. I just want to show different variations so you can see for yourself and make a decision uh, to which one would be best for you. So the first one that I bought was the Silver Bullet 1000 TIA, take it along. And what that consists of is this 80 through 6 coil. And the reason I got this, even though I'm never on 80, um, I wanted to have the option to, to get on it. So um, obviously it comes with the coil. It comes with these three smaller, these are the tripod legs. You get your um, tripod base, I guess this is called. And it comes with a hundred and what is it, 102 inch whip and three 33 foot counterpoise wires. I've worked all over the country with this antenna. It works fantastic and uh, I love it. So the other thing you can do with this antenna, uh, and, I, and I actually like better personally, uh, depending on how big uh, a kit you can carry, you can buy it in this configuration or you can buy it uh, with these longer legs, they call it a mega tripod. And this just gives you a wider base, uh, makes it a little bit more secure in terms of like wind loading. I have had this antenna fall over me, on me. Uh, nothing broke, it, it was okay, but um, I, I like the idea of having the longer legs. It just makes it a bit more sturdy. So either of those configurations you can buy it in. It ranges from about 140 to 160 bucks. And uh, that's the Take It Along 1000, very simple. The next configuration that you can get, uh, and everything's based off of one of these two coils. This is the Silver Bullet Mini. This is good for 40 through six, uh, and the, the Take It Along uh, Mini package comes with pretty much the same thing. You get the smaller legs, you get the base tripod thingy, 102 inch whip, and your 333 foot counterpoise wires. They also make what's called a Soda Special, where you get all this stuff, uh, but you get a, a shorter whip. Comes with this whip. This is a 78 inch whip, they say, although I don't think it's 78 inches. Um, so you can see a little bit of difference there. So if you're hiking up a mountain, just makes your, your pack a little more compact. Now, lastly, they have what's called the center loaded take it along. And what this package includes is everything from the Silver Bullet Mini, but it's also gonna add these two uh, lower extension arms. They're about two feet long each, and you screw these together, you put this at the, at the base, and now it raises your coil up more towards the center. And the idea behind this is it's gonna lower your takeoff angle, uh, so ideally you can get more DX. I haven't seen a huge difference myself, uh, but I'm operating in a solar minimum my entire ham career so far, so uh, maybe as the sunspots get better, we'll see some different results. So, Now another question I get all the time is about this whip right here. This is the MFJ 1979. This is a 17-foot telescopic whip, and, and I probably get more questions on have I used this antenna and, or, or whip and what my thoughts are on it. The thing with this whip is it's 17 feet long. It's already resonant on 20 meters just by screwing it into the base and adding your counterpoise wires. So you will not need the coil if you use this whip for 20 through six. You'll actually have to shorten this whip to get resonant on those bands. The neat thing about it, however, is I have played around with this and by putting this collar all the way down as far as you can go, I have gotten this to tune up on 75 meters. So uh, in a pinch, you can make it happen. Uh, I had to use a bit more counterpoise wires and kind of finagle it a little bit, but I got it to work. So that was pretty neat. Now I'll set these guys up and kind of show you the differences 
um, and how they look like and how they set up and all that stuff. So let's take a look at the Silver Bullet 1000 first. Now setup for all these is all exactly the same and all of the different components work together. So it's very modular. So uh, one thing I, I do like to do, I like to add one of these 90 degree connectors, just puts a little strain relief on the coax so it's not just going straight out and then uh, kinking it. So the first thing I like to do is get my counterpoise wires out and then we're gonna put them in our stakes here and screw them in. And then we'll tighten up the nut. And I like to have mine kind of shoot out um, that way not like that it's just it doesn't matter it's just personal preference my OCD and then we just rinse and repeat I have extra nuts on here because I'm actually gonna cut these wires and put um, the ring terminal here I'll clamp it down and then I'm just gonna have a power pole here so it just makes uh, my life a little bit easier that's you don't have to do that but that's my plan for these because power pull everything and that's the base. The next thing we're going to do is simply screw our coil into the tripod. Very simple. And then we add the whip. Extend it up. And we're on the air. So that's the mini tripod. Let's throw on the mega tripod and I'll show you the difference here. See how much more bigger it gets. One. A two. A three. And a whip. Not to be confused with cool whip. And there we go. So obviously a much bigger, more sturdy base, especially with uh, the 102 inch whip. If it's windy, less chance of it falling over. Uh, sometimes I'll put a, you know, my bag on top of one of the legs just to keep it from falling over. I have put stakes kind of in like a crisscross uh, to, to prevent them from falling over and that seemed to work as well. But uh, you throw that 17 foot whip on here, you're gonna want a bigger base tripod so yeah I, I i prefer this one but uh your mileage may vary so now here's the silver bullet mini in its stock configuration if you were to just buy it from wolf river coils you're going to get the smaller tripod the tripod mounting doohickey your 40 through 6 coil and your 106 inch whip a little bit smaller really the only difference is just you have you know basically that much less loading coil performs exactly the same there's no difference whatsoever. Tunes up, everything uh, is just fine. Now I'll show you the center loaded version. And with the center loaded version, you can kind of buy it two ways. If you already have the Silver Bullet Mini in this configuration, you can just buy the extension rods for like 30 bucks and get on the air. You're taking the weight of this though, and you're bringing it way higher. So your center of balance is, is now higher and the potential for it to fall over is higher. So I highly recommend getting the bigger legs. And if you just buy it in that configuration, they call it the center loaded, take it along. You get all of the bits and pieces for it. Uh, the only difference is a shorter whip. So I'm gonna show you that configuration now because I really think it's the best way to do this. But Again, you can part all this out. If you have some of these pieces, you can just get whatever you need to make it work. So uh, very, again, very modular. Um, so let's take a look at the center loaded version now. So this is the configuration that if you buy the center loaded version from Wolf River Coils, it's gonna come like this. You're gonna get the Mega Tripod. You're gonna get the Silver Bullet Mini. You're gonna get a shorter whip, which is fine because you're adding length here. These are the extensions. So. We're gonna screw these two together. These are gonna go on first. Everything is 3 8 24 threading. So now we can see our coil is gonna be way up here. I will put the whip on first because I'm not that tall and extend it before I put the coil on. 
Otherwise, I won't be able to do it. If you're Andre the Giant, you probably can, but I'm not. And again, the idea behind this is by center loading the coil, your takeoff angle goes down so we can work the DX stations more better. Now, as far as tuning these are concerned, they're not difficult, but I strongly recommend bringing an antenna analyzer with you. You don't need one. Uh, if you're not gonna have one, I suggest cranking up the volume on your radio and you're gonna raise and lower this coil and you're gonna listen for the most noise and then you can fine tune by uh, turning it, you know, turning it side to side. So I have this little uh, MFJ223 little pocket analyzer kind of thing. So we're just gonna kind of slide it up and down. Where I'm testing, I'm going for 40 right now. And we're already at 1.6, 1.4. So you just slide it up and down. And when you get close to where you're resonant, you just turn it. it doesn't take long. And now I'm at uh, 1.36-ish, 1.36, 57 ohms. So that's pretty good. And they're fairly wide band. So there's the whole phone portion of 40 meters. Starting to climb as we get down into the CW portion, but not terrible. And if you want to do other bands, you just do the same thing. You're just going to raise the coil. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, last but certainly not least, what does the MFJ 1979 whip do? Well, like I talked about, it's already resonant on 20 meters, but uh, I'm going to tune this up on uh, like 80, and we're going to see usually 80 is way down here. By adding this whip, we do a couple things. One, we're going to get more radiating element in the air, which is always a good thing. And two, we're going to use less loading, which is a good thing. So let's get this thing on here. I'll tune it up and we'll see where we're at. This thing is big, like really big. It's way up in the stratosphere. So let's see how much less inductance this needs on 80. I've actually never tuned this up on 80 in this configuration, so I'm kind of curious. Like I said, usually the coils like down here, I would guess it's probably gonna be closer to the center. Yeah. Oh, geez. Wow. Um, okay, that's pretty perfect. So I just chose 3.7 as a random frequency to tune up on, and uh, 1.18, it was actually 1.0 something. Uh, as you move away from the antenna, it's gonna change ever so slightly, but uh, yeah, pretty big band, so you'll have to tune it a little bit uh, if you wanna bounce around from there. So not quite as wide band. Well, that's still pretty good. So, it works. So here is the 17 foot whip on 20 meters. Here's the SWR. It's pretty flat across the band, but it's not great. It's pretty much 1.78 across the entire band-ish. But look at our ohms, we're, we're only at 28 ohms impedance. Now we could probably add more counterpoise wires and that might change some things, but that's what she looks like on 20. So now I'm checking out 17 meters just because, and the principles to get on any of the higher frequencies, we're just gonna shorten this whip until we get a nice SWR. That's looking pretty good. Not perfect, but definitely doable. So we can see 1.42 on our SWR. 61 ohms, not, not terrible. So that works. And just for giggles, we'll see uh, 10 meters. I don't know, see what happens. I imagine this is gonna have to be much, much shorter. There we go. 
is a 10 meter vertical ain't that big doesn't want to seem to go below about a two yeah the ohms are up there too that's about as good as i could get it on 10 meters not great not uh terrible kind of just meh I mean, it's got a pretty big bandwidth but Moving around doesn't change it a whole heck of a lot. So everyone asked my take on this whip. I kind of have mixed feelings on it. Uh, I definitely like that it's longer. And on 40 and 80 meters specifically, it's going to do better. For 20 through 6, eh, I would kind of rather use the coil with, with their whips uh, and maybe load it in a little bit because you can really fine tune it better. Your mileage may vary. This is just my experience with it. But it's, you know, if you're primarily an 80 or a 40 guy, uh, I'd say it's definitely worth it. But uh, I really haven't seen a huge difference in any of these configurations in terms of making contacts. I also put the Silver Bullet Mini on a trunk mount on my car for lunchtime on the air before the, the apocalypse happened. And I would work all kinds of stations. I don't even have it grounded or bonded to my car. It's just an antenna mount on my trunk. I screw the coil to it. I put on the, the, the shorter whip, the, I don't know, five or six foot whip, whatever it is. And I've worked the entire country from Detroit all the way to Washington, California, Florida, Maine, everywhere in between. Nevada, I still don't have you in logbook of the world. So someone in Nevada, please work me and confirm it. So I wanted to show all the configurations, the different whips, the different, you know, mounting options, the tripods, all of that stuff, because I am inundated with emails, uh, it seems almost on a daily basis. So hopefully this video will just show you uh, and help guide you to make the right decision for yourself. I will tell you, every single configuration of this works. So you really just have to pick which configuration works best for you. I hope this has helped. If you have questions, leave them down in the comment. That way uh, I can hopefully answer them or if someone else with different experience than me sees it, they can answer it as well. And uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. KMRD Radio Stuff, 73 guys.